How's it going guys? This is how to make a RetroPie gaming system inside a wooden box. For the electronics, I used a Raspberry Pi 3B, the standard power supply, a couple USB controllers, the Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen, and a micro SD card. The first step is to attach the Raspberry Pi to the back of the touchscreen using the four included screws. Then connect the ribbon cable and the power cables from the LCD circuit panel to the Raspberry Pi. Next you'll want to download the latest image of RetroPie from their website. You'll also need a program to flash the image to the SD card. I used Etcher, which is a free program. Open Etcher, select the RetroPie image, select your SD card, and then press the flash button. Insert the SD card back into the RetroPie and let it go through its initial startup. It'll eventually ask you to configure your controllers, then you can go ahead and install your games, which I won't get into here due to the illegal gray area involved in acquiring them. Alright, now on to the woodworking. I started by ripping a walnut board down to 3 inches, which will end up being the height of the box. I cut the sides with 45 degree miters on the miter saw. The sides are 12 inches long and the top and bottom are 9 inches long. I basically only measured one of each side, then used those pieces to cut two additional pieces of the same exact lengths. After all the pieces were cut, I used painter's tape to string all the sides together, then added glue and folded them into a box. Then I clamped everything down and waited for the glue to dry. There was a pretty deep wormhole in the top of the box, so I used some epoxy to fill it in. You want to do this to any holes or knots that you have to keep them stable over time. I wanted to reinforce the sides with dowels, so I created a template to place quarter inch holes on each side of the box. I held the template in place and used a quarter inch Forstner bit to mark each drilling location. Then I used the same drill bit to drill out the holes at the drill press. Mm -hmm. 
I cut the dowels from a quarter inch oak dowel from the hardware store, added some glue and hammered them into place. Once the glue set, I trim the dowels flush to the surface using a hacksaw blade. Then I flipped the box upside down and used a rabbiting bit in my router to create a channel for the bottom of the box to rest inside. Since the router leaves rounded corners, I squared them up with a chisel. I cut the bottom panel out of quarter inch plywood. While I was at it, I cut out the main panel that the controllers and LCD screen will be mounted on. To get these measurements, I simply traced the bottom and top of the box onto the plywood and then set my table saw accordingly. At this point, I moved on to the top of the box. I cut three strips of walnut and then some thinner strips of maple all oversized so that I could trim them flush to the box after they were all glued together. I glued everything together, waited for it to dry, then ran the top of the box through the planer to smooth out the surfaces. I then used a flush trim bit in my router to make the top of the box perfectly flush with the body. Next I taped each hinge in place and used a self-centering bit to pre-drill each hole, then screwed them into place. Here I'm marking the area that needs to be removed in order for the LCD screen to fit properly onto the main panel. I then used a Forzner bit to remove as much of the area as possible and cleaned up the rest with a hacksaw blade and a file. Here I'm cutting a quarter inch hole into a scrap piece of wood, then cutting down the center of the hole to create the brackets that the main panel will pivot on. And then I glued the brackets in place on the back of the main panel. To keep the controllers mounted in place, I used small round magnets on the back of each of them. Here I'm marking the locations to drill the holes for those magnets to fit into. The magnets were 3 eighths of an inch in diameter so I used a 3 8 inch drill bit to bore out the holes. Then to attach the magnets in the correct spot on the back of the controllers, I taped them in place and epoxied the magnets through the back of the main panel and onto each controller. I also drilled out holes for the controller cables to feed through, and here's what the final main panel looks like with all of the holes drilled out. I epoxied some washers onto the pivot brackets. The screws will feed through these and into the sides of the box. I then sanded all the surfaces up to 320 grit. I flipped the box upside down and used 1 inch spacers to rest the main panel on, then put screws through the washers to keep it in place but left it free to pivot. Uh, 
I also put small nails behind the top of the main panel to ensure that it would rest at level when the box is opened. I used a small piece of scrap wood screwed into the side of the box as a kickstand to allow the screen to be set at a more comfortable viewing angle. Finally, I epoxied some 8 inch thick steel flat bar behind the holes for the controller so that the magnets had something to attach to. I finished everything with butcher block oil, which is definitely not the most durable finish, but it's quick and at this point I was ready to be done with this thing. At last it was time for the final assembly. I ran the controller cables through the back of the panel and attached the bottom of the box with brad nails. And then I attached the LCD screen with three millimeter bolts, some washers, and a hex nut to tighten the screen to the main panel. And that is it guys, here it is in operation. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this project, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. I'll see you guys next time.